turn and run all the way back and lift up on the wall. All right? And then up the short ball. Alright, then fall back. Turn and I'm running all the way back. And then let it drop all the way to this spot. Alright, and then I'm gonna go up for another short ball. Alright, so let me let me point out a couple things here that are going on because it's happening pretty fast. The first thing, let's notice with Eric's feet. These are two things you don't want to do. You don't want to backpedal. Watch Eric backpedal. Why? It's slower. It's going to fatigue you. Okay? The next thing you don't want to do, run back up there. Next thing you don't want to do is you don't want to side shuffle. Go ahead, side shuffle. That's also going to be a slow way to get to the ball. So you're going to be exhausted by the time you get there. So the key here, if you watch his footwork, as he's tracking and looking over the shoulder, he's just simply running because it's efficient and it's faster. Watch him run. And really what you want to do when you're running is you want to hit the jets. So if you misjudge the ball, you've got time because you're back there early. All right? So now let's watch the second aspect of what's really important here. As he gets back there, go ahead. He's going to let that ball come down after the bounce. He's going to try to hit that around waist level. I think a lot of advanced beginners make the mistake of reaching up for the ball and panicking and your racket face opens. Show him an open racket face. Okay, watch him do this incorrectly. All right, that's very incorrect. All right, so what he's going to do is be patient. Let that ball come down in your hitting zone. And the other benefit to it is it's going to be moving a lot slower as it descends. You can hit it between your waist and your knee. So let's watch him do this again. So he's got time. He's hit the jets. And he's going to let it come in. Now the last shot is a short ball. And one of the things people mistake, and then Eric, if you just stand right there and demonstrate, show us like a normal backswing. Don't even move. All right? Take it back further. So there's his normal backswing. Well, as you're running forward and you're close to the court, you really don't need all that backswing. So what he's going to do is he's going to shorten his backswing. And really what he's doing is he's recognizing, hey, I have less court to hit into. I don't need as much backswing. And A, and B, I've got some momentum here that I've got to account for, so I don't need as much swag on the ball. So we're going to label these swings. If his normal, show me your normal backswing, Eric. Just freeze it matrix style. Let's call that a five backswing. So let's cut it in half. Give me your three backswing. That's how you want to adjust the stuff. Okay? Once we get into two and one backswings, we're really talking about a volley backswing. So our three bullet points, let's watch him as he does it in real time here. He's going to run to the ball when he tracks. He's going to let it descend. And he's going to adjust his backswing or calibrate it because he's recognizing he's in a different position. All right? So these are the drills we're going to work on. And we're going to spend a lot of time on it because it looks a little easier than it is. But it's hard, you know? Because I think you spend all that energy going backwards. You're like, oh, my God, I'm here. And you panic and you want to hit the ball. And you'll even say, don't panic. And you'll still do it. So I think it just needs repetition. You're going to find it's a workout, too. Eric's even breathing hard. All right? Go out on line over here. Let's go.